Hey, how's everybody doing? So, uh, if you're wondering why this video has the exact same title as the last one, which I'm most likely gonna uh, delete, uh, it's because I misspoke about the bass on Fougere Angelique. So, I got a couple comments telling me that was uh, that Fougere Angelique is in the reserve bass, so I went on Mangers and I double checked, and it is indeed. Uh, I just kind of, I guess, read the notes for the soap, stopped there, didn't bother to read on. <laughs> so, uh, yes, the soap is indeed in the reserve base. Um, let me just wet my face real quick, and I'll get to lathering. So, the reserve base, performance-wise, I would rate just about the same as Excelsior. Uh, the only caveat is uh, the reserve base is pretty much opposite with Excelsior in that it is kind of a little harder to dial in. It needs a lot of water. Um, the reason I couldn't really differentiate is because with Barrister and Man, regardless of Excelsior, Reserve, or the Glissant, I just dump water into the stuff. So. I don't really notice a difference in the uh, the water band in that sense because I always just hydrated a ton, so I didn't really see the difference originally. But thank you for correcting me. Um, you know, I don't want to give misinformation like saying this is an Excelsior when it's not, because Reserve is is very on the opposite spectrum of Excelsior, like I said, in that it's kind of harder to work with. Um, so if you're someone who's not used to hydrating their lathers, this soap will definitely teach you how to do that. <laughs> but aside from that, it's a lather that's made Kind of along the same lines as Excelsior, very slick, very cushiony, excellent post shave. Reserve is also known for having great hard water tolerance. Like I always say, I don't have hard water here, so I can't attest to that. But yeah, very, very nice. Uh, so the scent again is, I, I got a second chance to look at the notes, so I'm a little more familiar. Uh, lavender, lime, lemon, uh, cedar, balsam fir, burning wood, geranium, and there might be some, just like maybe a couple other scent notes in there, but that's like the bulk of them. So. If you haven't watched the previous review, um, this is not very fougere-like. It's not very green to my nose. It's definitely more citrus forward. And the, um, the, f the geranium and the cedar and balsam for a kind of play background to the uh, the citrus. Overall, it's very nice. Um, I really enjoy the scent actually, but I, I really like citrus scents, so I'm a little more biased towards it. But yeah, I definitely describe this as more of a citrus accord with like a, not woodsy, but a kind of woodsy and slightly floral background. Um, I don't really get the tonka and I don't really get the burning wood. Somebody with a better nose might, but yeah, it's, if you like citrus, I think this will be a good one for you. Um, then again, everyone's nose is different. And as of the day that I checked, if like back on the reserve, if it was reserve or not, um, I think that was either 
yesterday or the day before, this soap should still be available. So if you're interested at all, I'd suggest picking it up. It is very good. Performance is excellent as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So um, same thing as last time. If you're just here for the review, thank you for watching. Gotta suck the shave. Um, it was the exact same setup. It was the Magnum B6 and going with the MIDI 9.8s square point, slight smile, near wedge, got the spine work, dark angel wing. Um, pretty much my favorite razor. This thing is awesome. I do not have as much growth as last time though. I wanted to try and get my correction out a little bit quicker. So this is one day's worth of growth. Yeah, very nice. So today is Tuesday when I'm recording. So uh, on Mondays, I normally do chess, just like, you know, the rest of the world. Um, I do chess twice a week though. The way I run my split, I hit my full body twice a week. But, uh, just wanted to say that I hit and, well, basically anything past what I'm doing now is always going to be an all-time PR. But this is like one of my lifetime goals that I achieved. Uh, I hit three plates, so that's... 315 pounds on the bench press uh, and I did it for three reps so I mean I, I would have been happy with just one um, personally I'm not a fan of doing singles and I can talk about that in a second but yeah I hit three plates 315 for three reps on flat bench press um, so as I was saying that's not only a lifetime PR but I achieved like kind of one of my goals that I set out when I first started lifting. So, pretty cool. But uh, yeah, my kind of thoughts on one rep maxes, if you're not, um, if you're not like a power lifter, you know, you're, if you're a power lifter, you're training for competitions, obviously you're one rep maxing in those competitions. So testing your one rep max for training makes sense but if you're not and you know your general goal is either fitness hypertrophy maybe you are trying to build strength but you're not doing like a powerlifting meet or anything i personally think that one rep maxing it it's just um it's just kind of an ego thing i don't i don't really see a lot of benefit in one rep maxing your your workout it, it's not necessarily like kind of ruined but like the your working sets are all gonna be like the weights you can use are gonna all be way lower than uh you know you would have if you had just done them fresh so like let's say you're benching and uh you're doing like sets of five or something yeah so you go and you, you do your one rep max and you had originally like wanted to work with uh with 225 for five you know something like that so two plates you're most likely not going to be able to do that maybe you can do 205 um and then even then it's not going to be like optimal like good reps at that point you're going to be a little more fatigued because your your central nervous system or cns is kind of fried from doing that one rm Especially if your body's not used to doing one rep maxes, um, 
yeah, it's not gonna really enjoy that. So, uh, you don't really get a good training effect from one rep maxes. Like, you don't really. build any strength, you don't really build a lot of muscle um, when you're maxing. Also, I, I think your chances for injury goes up. Um, normally when you're, when you're maxing, you're not, you're not necessarily looking for the best form. You're just looking to get weight up. So you could sacrifice form in, in like, you know, chasing weight and, uh, when you sacrifice that form, you could put your body in a compromising position and uh, you know you could injure yourself and you're using more weight than your body's used to maybe your your joints and your tendons aren't so happy with that just a lot of uh, a lot of unknowns there you know you're working with weight you've never worked with before because you're you're testing a one rep max so you don't know how your body's going to handle that um yeah just a lot of things where it's just unnecessary risk you really don't get too much out of it aside from like more for just like an ego thing you know like it's like oh yeah i know i can bench this much now but i'd rather just like work up to being able to do reps with that weight like maybe when i you know when i first started like going back to flat bench i could have tried 315 for one you know i maybe could have done it but i would rather be able to like do reps with 315 you know so I didn't want to settle for just getting one rep of 315. Like I, I wanted to do at least three and I did that. So now I want to do at least five. And then I'd like to be able to do like working sets with 315 for like five reps, you know? So that's just kind of my thoughts on, on singles. Um, really the only lift that I feel that would be safe to do a single with is like a deadlift. Um, mostly because if you can't do it, the bar is just not gonna move because it's already it's already on the ground. You know, it it really it's not like a bench press where you you unrack it and then you coming down and then. Like, you know, something could, could overstretch or your chest just can't take it and you just snap your, you know, you pull your chest muscle or something like that. Or like with a squat, you know, like maybe your lower back's not like strong enough to handle and you just keel forward and, you know, you can mess up your lower back, you can mess up your knees, you can do a lot of things. But with a deadlift, because it's already on the ground, um, you know, if you feel if you maybe you get it off the ground but it stops moving or something you can just kind of drop it you know you're it's it's a lot less risk in my opinion to do that you know maybe i'm maybe i'm completely wrong somebody who knows exercise science can feel free to uh correct me and i will and i will gladly you know change my mind about that but um yeah, I feel like the deadlift, you definitely want to kind of work it in a 
lower rep range, I feel like, once you start getting into the higher rep ranges of deadlifting, like past eight reps, I think that's when you get into the, um, the area of getting injured. So deadlifts are the one where I kind of feel opposite about them. Like bench press and stuff, I feel like you can do a lot of reps. Squats, I, I used to do a lot of reps on squats. I used to do like sets of 20, sets of 30 on squats. But with deadlifts, I feel like you definitely have a higher potential to like strain your, especially your lower back, because as it starts getting fatigued, the um, the tendency to kind of start like rounding, you know, like not keeping tension in the lower back anymore, not keeping like a flex spine, letting you, letting your thoracic spine kind of round more. I feel like that tendency is going to get a little higher. And, um, because of that, I feel like your risk of injury goes up a lot more. So, yeah, I, I personally feel like deadlifts are better to do in like the lower ranges. So like fives and lower. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do sets of eight. But I, I just feel like it's a little less risky. Um, so that's my... If you notice, I'm, I'm all about kind of like a risk-reward type of mindset. Like, How much benefit do I get out of doing certain exercises? What are the potential hazards? I mean, because that's what my job is, you know. Basically, the the pilots that that kind of survive and live the longest and have, you know, good careers are pilots that that are good at managing risk, you know. training stuff um you know if you want to one rep max cool like you do you i'm not going to tell you how to train um you just gotta kind of think about what you're getting out of it um how risky it is do you have a spotter do you have a spotter who's experienced are you just asking like you know joe schmo or maybe your buddy who's just like just starting out with you stuff like that um You know, if you're on a program, is your program calling for a one rep max? If not, stick to your program. Why, you know, test it. Um, if you're kind of curious as to what your one rep max is, you can use like a one rep max calculator. Um, stuff like that. Like I know my one rep max is generally something in the realm of like 340 that's what my calculated one rep max is at least so but yeah. so bottom line cost benefits is it worth it 
are you going to get a good workout if you still do your one rep max? Um, are you risking injury? Um, you know, is this only benefiting your ego? Is there another benefit to like finding out your one rep max? To me, there's not. You don't really get strength gains out of it. Um, you don't really get muscle gains because you're not fatiguing the muscle enough. Um, so kind of the way hypertrophy works is uh, the closer you can get your, the more reps you can do and getting your muscle closer to failure, the better. So let's say you're aiming for eight reps and at five reps, it feels like you're starting to reach fatigue. That means you're doing three reps approaching muscular failure. Um, you know, with the one rep max, you're really only doing one rep. So you're losing out on two reps. The likeliness you can do that one rep max again, very, very low. So you're not really getting a lot of muscle gain out of it. Um, I don't really think there's a lot of strength gains that come out of one rep maxes. You're better off doing like threes or fives, if you ask me. Um, I'm not really a power lifter, like by trade, I'm, I'm much more like versed in bodybuilding so i could be wrong there but um yeah that's about it so i'm gonna stop rambling uh just get this aftershave on magic splash i think i forgot to put that on last time on camera but um i would assume this one's in the reserve splash formula as well i was so concerned with looking at the soap i kind of forgot to look at the splash so But yeah, this stuff smells great. I really like it. I'm a I'm a citrus guy though. So if you're not really a fan of citrus or you know you're just kind of okay with citrus scents, this is probably not gonna be your favorite. Like I know uh Mondo, the Mondo Bioni Castle Shave, although I don't know if he changed his YouTube name. But uh he said that he wasn't really blown away with this stuff. And I don't know, I really don't think it's something that's gonna like knock your socks off but it is definitely something i enjoy um but it's just kind of a like a citrus forward like just a great scent you know i wouldn't say it's it's basic by any means because it does have a little bit of complexity to it it is very nice but yeah it's nothing over the top or super you know just like whoa this is something like that so uh yeah but that's about it sorry for the ramble thank you for watching i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the shave hope you guys you know learned something stay safe when you're lifting <laughs> um and yeah hope you guys have a good one hope to catch you in the next one and i will see you